If you want to know how to get better mixes for your beats, then you need to follow these five steps I'll be showing you in this video. Hi there, I'm Sir Classy and this is SC Toots. If you're new to this channel, I teach people like you how to make much better music by providing very simple and easy to follow tutorials like this one you'll be watching. And without wasting any more time, let's look at the five steps that you need to know to improve your beat mixes. For step one, you need to remove unwanted frequencies. I don't think people understand how important this tool is when you're trying to get a clean mix. I'll give you five seconds to guess what I'm talking about. If you guess EQ, you are correct. Using EQ correctly can help you take out unwanted frequencies in your mix, making your mix sound a whole lot cleaner. So let me show you how to achieve space and clarity in your mix using EQ, okay? So on each of your drum elements, like I have right here, so you just simply load up an EQ on each insert, okay? Just load an EQ on each one, as you can see that I have right here. Then the next thing you want to do is use a high pass filter, okay? Just come to the first um, knob right here, right click, come to type, high pass, then order, Okay, steep it. Now you want to drag this into you hear a change, you know, in the sound, then you back off a little bit. For example, right here, I have this kick. Now I'm not going to take it all the way in like this. That change is way too obvious and way too much. So I'm going to keep backing up till I notice, you know, the change is very minimal. And when I turn it off, when I turn it on, now it doesn't sound like there's a lot going on, there's a huge difference, but trust me, this helps take out unwanted frequencies because most times you really can't hear those unwanted frequencies, okay? So when I do that for each, so I'm just going to repeat the same thing for the rim shot as well. I repeat it for my percussions, my shaker, look, basically all the drum elements that I have, okay? And even for your melodies as well, you want to have that going on for your melodies too. So this is how the drum sounds when there are no EQ on the drums. You can easily hear how much cleaner the drums are and you can hear that space that opens up when you take out the unwanted frequency. Many times I get asked to recommend a plugin that can help make your mix sound full and heavy. And the answer is... It's in the boss. Yes, using bosses. Using a drum boss can help make your drum sound full and heavy. Okay, to create a drum boss is pretty easy. I'm going to show you how. So all you have to do is just simply highlight all your drum tracks by holding Control and Shift on Windows or Command and Shift on Mac. Okay, just highlight each one of them, like click each one. Then click an empty space, make sure you have an empty space selected as well, okay? Then when they are selected, right click the empty space, then come to track routing, then come to route selected to this track only, then they will all be routed into the drum bus. Now they can all share common effects. And that's pretty helpful. Because the effects that we typically use to make our drum bus sound heavy and make our drums come alive are analog modeled effects. Like the CLE76, which is a compressor, and the Sheps EQ, which is also an analog model effect, it's an EQ, okay? So you can use an SSL EQ, which is also pretty good, or the SSL compressor, which is also really good, but I just prefer using these guys, okay? So to do this, we're just simply going to use this to get the tone out of, for example, the compressor. We're going to look out to get, at most, between minus 1 to minus 3 dB of gain reduction, because we don't want the compression working too hard. So it doesn't kill the transient of drums, okay? Just, we just want to get the tone out of it, okay? And to get to between minus 1 to minus 3 dB, just simply adjust the input right here. Tell you first between minus 1 to minus 3 dB of um, gain reduction. And you want to make sure that the input that is the loudness level coming in and the loudness level after compression is pretty much the same. So you adjust the output right here. So I'm going to turn you off. So when I turn up the compressor, let's see if you can hear the punch that this adds to the drums.
And they will use EQ. We simply use EQ to add some presence or detail in the mid range. Okay. So right here, for example, if I want my drums to be bright, I can simply um, boost the high end. If I want to be dark, I can cut the high end. And if I want the, the more presence for my drums, I can simply boost or cut, you know, the mid range. Okay. So when so I'm going to turn it on, when I press play. When I boost, you can hear it sounds like it has a little bit more presence. And when I cut, you can hear a difference right in how the drum sounds and feels. Okay, so I'm just going to take, I just want a little bit of presence in there. Okay, and I recommend when you are boosting or cutting with EQs like this, try to go stay within, try to stay within. You know plus or minus one to three db okay you don't want to go too far when you're cutting or boosting with this kind of eq okay stick within minus one to minus three or plus one to plus three okay and for mid-range now this can vary depending on the kind of drum elements you have but i typically recommend around 700 to about 1500 heads if you want that presence from your drums to cut through okay just somewhere around that point is usually the sweet spot to get more presence from your drums all right Right here is currently at 0 0.7 kilohertz, which is which is 700 hertz, okay. And this is currently at um 1 dB, just 1 dB of um 700 hertz can make or break your drums, can make it sound better, you know, or just flat. So when I turn it off, this is how it sounds. For step three, you need to make sure you pan your drum elements and your melodies correctly. It amazes me how often this simple step is overlooked when mixing. Getting this simple step correct can make your mix sound like it's 3D or make it sound flat if you get it wrong. So here are some tips to pan your elements correctly in the mix, okay? For elements that have a lot of bass in them, like your bass kick, your bass guitar, or your synth bass, okay? And any sound really that has just a lot of bass in them, they should stay in the middle, all right? Then sounds that are similar in rhythm or in tone should be panned in opposite direction for example two snares okay or two claps or a snare and a clap or a piano and a guitar right it should be panned in opposite direction this help create more space you know in the mix and the third tip for panning is if you have a dense mix or a dense production you should pan further from the center so that they have more space to really shine and if you have a minimal production or a minimal mix pan closer to the center so that the mix sound full instead of sounding empty all right so these are the beat sounds when it's panned correctly. And this is how the beat sound when it's not panned. For step four, you need to create a melody boss. Now, this is a trick no one shows you when you start learning how to mix, even on YouTube. And this trick is easy, simply just having a melody boss and then using a mid-side EQ. Let me show you how to do that. So, go to your insert where you have your melodies linked, okay? Then highlight each one of them, all right? Then link it, create a boss, just come to track routing, create um, route selected to this track only. So that's the boss, you can see they're all sent to this empty inserts or this previously empty inserts, okay? Just rename it to Melody Boss, all right? So for the mid-side EQ, I'll be using the Isotope Ozone, the regular EQ from Isotope Ozone, it does have mid-side um, EQing features. So I'm going to change it from stereo to mid-side, okay? And then I recommend you cut in the mid somewhere within, you know, minus one to minus three dB, okay? So you just take this notch right here. You want to make it wider, okay? Then take it down. Then we'll listen to the before and the after, okay? So let's listen to how it sounds before when it's off. And when it's on,
So what this does is that it helps create more room in the mix so that the vocals can sit better in the mix, you know, without much struggle, okay? So for the fifth step, you need to know how to make your beats loud without distortion. Here's a three-step trick no one is going to show you if you want to know how to make your beats loud without distortion. First, make sure your beat is well mixed, then export it as a WAV file. Okay, come to export, WAV. I recommend you export as 32 bits float. Okay, this is the highest quality. For example, if you see 32 bits, 24 bits, you can see the difference in the file size. So just, to, so just use 32 bits, okay? Then export. So when the bit is exported, bring it back into FL Studio and then load up an EQ and use a high pass filter to about um, 25 to 35 heads. I'm going to come right here, high pass, order step eight. Okay, so let's say about 30 something heads, okay? Because you typically want to take out some bass, okay? If you want more loudness, you're going to sacrifice some more bass, okay? So I'm going to just take this out here. Then use a limiter to drive this bad boy up until it hits somewhere around minus 7 to minus 10 LUFS, okay? So I'm just going to increase the ceiling a bit, then increase the gain. And then you want to control the peaks with this ceiling. And when I turn off, Plug inside sound. I want to turn it on. I hope you found these steps helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe. See you soon. Cheers.